Vinny, what are you barking at? Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Tonight on the show, we're going to teach you a pretty quick and easy dinner. It's called Pasta Primavera. John and I both had hectic days, and also we've been eating too much heavy food on the show, such as bread and more bread, and also the heaviest stew I think I've ever made in my life. Oh, my neighbor's getting a pizza. So, Pasta Primavera is a dish that was popularized in the 1970s. And it was actually very innovative at the time because in the 70s people were eating things like condensed soup casserole. But in fact, primavera is Italian for spring and it literally is pasta with vegetables. So when with calling it spring pasta, what they mean is like it's supposed to be with spring vegetables when vegetables are like, you know, nice to eat. It's not spring. In optimal circumstances, you would make it with like really nice ingredients, right? You would try to get vegetables at their peak freshness. So, tonight, we're already sipping on a little beer. What kind of beer is it? It's not a basic lager. <laughs> but later, we'll, they'll be, I'll, uh, I'll swag out on that beer. All right, so I thought ahead my noggin. I put on a pot of water to boil, lightly salted. And what we're going to do is we're going to blanch some of the vegetables that are going in this. I'm going to use a shitload of vegetables because I have a shitload of vegetables and I am hungry. Blanching a vegetable is when you very lightly cook it, you dunk it into boiling water, you transfer it typically to an ice water bath, and what that does is it par cooks it. So after it's blanched, we're also going to saute it. By pre-cooking it a little bit, you give yourself something better when you go to, to cook it in a pan. So, I'm only going to blanch some of these things, but I have I just have a shitload of vegetables here. We're not going to use all of these, but this is also where I throw my garden stuff. Also, look at this mother tomato. This Hungarian heart tomato. This is the size of an enlarged human heart. It's very hefty. And it's not ripe yet, but some critters have been attacking this plant. And I was like, this is the biggest tomato I think I've ever grown, so I better snag that. It'll ripen inside. Anyways, I am going to blanch broccolini, which is baby broccoli, some asparagus, and some greenish beanus that I grew, about a couple varieties. And I think those will be what we bunch. I don't think we need too much more than that. So over here on my cutting board, the green beans have been hand washed thoroughly and we will cut them into bite sized pieces. And then I got this dragon bean and this is the kind of bean where the pod might be tender, might not be tender, we'll see. There's only like three pieces in the whole thing so I don't really care. And since I'm going to be doing these in, in batches, I'm just going to take these and just pop them into my water. I really will only let them cook in there for a minute or two, really at most. All right, next is broccolini. Broccolini is typically pretty tender. Give this a quick rinse. But again, we'll be chopping that into bite-sized pieces. The bottom stems may be a little tough, so especially if they're real thick, you can slice them. That might be a nice thing to do. Or, if you like wasting things, you could discard them. Or, if you've got a conscience, you could compost them. Either way. So we'll go ahead and blanch those too. Actually, you can see how quickly these beans blanch. You can see that they're very bright now. And because they're bright like that, I'm just gonna go ahead and take them to the side. I really meant to get uh, ice water going already. So, that's the one thing I did not prep. So I'm gonna I'm do that real quick. Don't need a ton of water because I'm gonna keep throwing veggies in. All right, now our broccolini, blanching. By the way, you could completely skip this step. I think a lot of people do skip this step, but you know, thinking about the simplicity of this dish, I figured I'd throw a little bit more effort into this part because it'll make our, you know, simple dish nicer. And you know, if you don't have to f with dough or cook things for three hours, then you could, you know, you could blanch a vegetable. You could do it. I know you can. Uh, the asparagus has seen better days. It's been sitting in my fridge for a minute, which is okay. And because it doesn't really look all that nice, I'm really only gonna use part of it, which would be the tender tips, and uh, feed the rest of my worms. Now that is wasteful. I will acknowledge that, but also I don't care. Go ahead and pop that in too. Don't really gotta blanch these too terribly long. Look at that broccoli, it looks great. You can see why like people in the 60s and 70s were like, yeah, blanch that shit. So it looks fabulous, doesn't it? Aren't you like, let me eat that. That's gonna give me health. 
That looks like health. Look at that. No, no color correction. All right, so that's our last bit of blanching. Give it another couple seconds here. All right, the rest of our shit's blanched. And we'll go over here so I get everything out. And I tell you what, if they're still steaming, such as they are, you might need to throw a couple more ice cubes in there. Put a little more water in there. All right, let's do other veggies. No, let's cook the pasta. Here I have Da Vinci bow ties. It's not a wagon of wheel, it's a fur flea. So, being clever and handy, I happen to have a pot of boiling water right here. And it's got some floaty veggie shit in it, but you know, this is gonna taste like vegetables anyway. So look at that. And the pasta's done. Almost, gotta wait a few minutes. This says 11 to 13 minutes. See what 11 minutes and 11 seconds looks like. And in our other pan, get that heated up over medium heat. And you can use olive oil or butter, whatever cooking oil you want. There's a couple versions of this. Sometimes it's just olive oil and a little cheese. I'm gonna make like a light cream sauce. And the reason I'm doing that is it sounds tastier. You're gonna eat all that and fing vegetables, you can put a little cream in there. All right, so I'm gonna do a little butter, a tablespoon of butter, and I'm just gonna get that melting. Actually, let's do medium high heat. So while that is melting, we will chop other vegetables. Oh, I lost the bean. Here's, here's, the, here's the quick blanch. All right. Uh, so I got a zucchini, which I need to wash. Also the squash. So I like, I like zucchini and squash more than the average person. So you might want to just choose one or the other, depending on how much pasta you're making. But I'll just be throwing them both in. My dog is screaming. Vinny, why are you mad? And actually just thinking about this is probably too much. So I'm gonna set probably half of this aside and eat it tomorrow. Or maybe later, a midnight snack. Raw squash and zucchini. I'm just kidding, I wouldn't do that. I would cook it. I'm not a maniac. If you're wondering why this pot looks weird, it's because I brew iced tea in it all the time. So the tea's kind of stained it a little bit. All right, and uh, we'll just go ahead and Throw these in. And depending on how big of a pan you're using, you can kind of cook things in batches. You can salt if you want. Actually, the uh, pan does not seem like it's hot enough, but that's okay. All right, next up we'll do a couple peppers. So I got an orange bell pepper, and I got a Hungarian wax pepper. And if you want to uh, cook with finesse, and cook like the best, you'll get rid of some of that, uh, that inner you know, tissue. I don't know what you want to call it, fascia, but I don't care. Tastes fine to me. Wax pepper is kind of like a banana pepper. Just a, a yellow pepper. It's usually not hot. And you can just do one of these. And we'll go ahead and pop those in. And that's about all the veggies I'm gonna put into the pan at, the, at once. It's already pretty full. You put too many veggies in there, they're not gonna cook nicely. But we got a side side bowl. So we're gonna cook those and pop them in a the side bowl. Now here I got a red onion. Whoa! I don't know what the f happened there. This onions jumped at me. When onions jumping at you, cut it up. You can't be trusted. So I would say maybe a quarter of an onion sliced. You don't want to go overboard on onion because uh, it can overpower the dish. And then uh, cherry tomatoes. These I, I grew from my garden. Let's go ahead and chop those in half. All right. I'll just go ahead and dump those all back in this bowl. I washed all those tomatoes, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. Now here's my crazy innovative thing. It's an ear of corn. Now many people say, oh, that's not innovative. That's dumb. That's what they say. But what I want to show you is kind of a fun way to eat corn. And if you're from the Midwest, you're like, all right, sign me up. I love corn. Didn't know you could have more fun eating corn. I already love corn so much. That's how most people in the Midwest think, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to chop off chunks of this corn. And this takes a little bit of finesse, so I'm sorry in advance. But take your corn and cut deeply in such a way that you get a few chunks like this. So you're gonna cut it a little closer to the ear or like the inner core than you would otherwise. And by doing so, you'll get these chunks which actually you can fry together. It might fall apart. It'll probably still be delicious. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole the whole head because I like corn. If you don't like corn, f*** off. All right, there's our corn. And I've let these sit here too long. So I got some, you know, Crispy parts, that's okay. So you're looking for tender vegetables that are cooked, but not all the way. Pasta's almost done. All right, and what else can we do? We can do one more thing right now, which is to prepare some veggie stock. And you know, I got the better than bouillon shits. So we will make it dill style. We only need a cup, really ain't that much. But I feel like that's mixing pretty nicely. Better than chicken anyways. If you wanted to use chicken stock, you could. All right, just a couple more uh, tosses here. You want your veggies tender, but not mushy. But these are just about where you want them, where you can see that they're mostly cooked. If they're a little underdone, don't worry, you're gonna cook them some more. Actually, this is good. And we will saute the next batch. 
This time we'll use olive oil. Why? Because why not? Depth of flavor. Gotta heat up for a second. Just a quick second. We'll cook the next thing. Onions and tomatoes. All of our corn. Who ever cooked corn that way? Nobody. Just salt in it. All right. Let's see if our pasta's done. My guess is it's not quite there. It's hot. Just needs a minute or two. Almost there. All right. Well, that's cooking. I'm gonna work on some garlic. With this homegrown garlic, aka the only garlic worth eating. Just kidding. Well, garlic is beautiful. Four cloves. They're small cloves, so it's really like three cloves of garlic. And just uh, a pretty rough chop will be fine. Actually, a very rough chop. Plenty. Cooking nice and quick. You can go ahead and strain off these far cooked veggies. And also, before you do anything else with these, you should taste them. So let's see what an asparagus tastes like. It's actually pretty well cooked. So I over blanched them a little bit. Looks like pretty much all our corn fell apart. That's all right, I don't care. And I go ahead and pop these out. So you can see these are like, it's not cooked a whole lot. Not a lot, whole lot at all. And we'll do a little more olive oil. While that's doing that, we will drain the pasta and give it a strain. Take your glasses off when straining. I did not. Ooh. All right, pasta's nice. All right, and then we'll give these a quick saute. If you didn't drain them very well, they will uh, really sizzle because they still have water on them. More salt, just salting at every stage. The ways of salt, the ways of salt, the ways of salt, the salting at every stage. And these are very tender already, so we're just gonna give them a quick, a quick cook. It's probably enough. We'll go back in this bowl. All right, now I'm gonna grab another tablespoon of butter, a little bit of olive oil, and we are going to, on lower heat, fry off the garlic, which I have here. I like big chunks of garlic. So this just needs a quick minute. You're basically letting the garlic get aromatic, as it were. Just opens up some of the flavor. So once that's just even like a little bit crispy, just like kind of browned off, turn the heat up and add your veggie stock. And in the veggie stock, we are gonna cook down for about five minutes. I'm gonna bring this to a simmer. It's gonna reduce a little bit. This is a good time to take a quick breather. We'll be right back. They say in life, when you find something you like, you should support it. You don't gotta support it, so I'm not implying anything. I'm just trying to set up a, a gag, as it were. And so, tonight, we'll be enjoying the simple taste of Platform Basic Lager. I like to put my beer, my beer koozie, and put on my drinking hat to enjoy the cold. Namaste. All right, now, to this, so also we're gonna add half a cup heavy whipping cream, which is gonna be about half this little carton. Turn the heat down. How do you know it's half? You don't. So give that a stir like this. And then you can let this cook down slightly, but you don't wanna like vigorously boil it lest it curdle, which could be disastrous. Meanwhile, over here, get you a big lemon. And if you want, you could use a juicer, but I ain't gonna f with that. So I'm gonna use a quarter of a, this big wedge initially, and then I'm gonna finish with another quarter. And that's gonna be good. All right, now here's another thing you can do while you're waiting. If you want to, you can just take the, uh, the vegetables and put them on a pasta. <laughs> what does this step do? I don't know. The flavors will start to marry or something. And if you wanna mix it up, you can mix it up. Doesn't that look so healthy? It's too healthy. That's why we're gonna put cream on it. So you see this right here, what we're doing with the cream? Having it at that, that low simmer like that is gonna be okay. That's how you can reduce down cream. Actually, I'm just gonna throw all the lemon juice at the end. I don't really feel like cooking lemon juice. Now, if you're a carnivore, or you're just like, oh, I gotta eat animal every time. Gotta eat animal every time. Good protein for this would be shrimp. Shrimp would go real nice in this. Plus, it'd be very easy to cook them right at this stage. You can basically prepare your sauce, lightly cook the shrimp in the sauce, good to go. Another alternative would be chicken. A little bit more involved, you gotta cook it longer. This would taste great with grilled chicken because it has some of those fresh flavors. And that's it, those are the only two options. You can't do anything else. <laughs> anything else would be sacrilegious, heretical even. There's a certain thing that cream sauce does when it's thickened up a bit that I'm looking for. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like if we can get there. I don't know if we can, because I think it's gonna be a little thin. But thin sauce is not gonna be that bad, because it's gonna it's gonna coat everything. It's still gonna give it that like light feeling. Because if it was super thick and creamy, then you'd be like, wow, I'm eating Alfredo. Which is good, but it's not what we're going for. We'll be back. Okay, so you can see in our sauce, 
You see how these bubbles, they almost, the sauce almost looks thicker. The bubbles are bigger than they used to be. It almost looks like it's trying to hold together more. We could keep reducing this down and eventually it would get, it would literally look gloppy. Viscous? I don't know, thick. So this is good enough for me for what we're doing tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some lemon juice, which of course is gonna thin it out. Doing the opposite of uh, what we were trying to do. And actually, I just had a thought. Bold maneuver will make really no difference with the final dish. But I've had this parsley sitting on my uh, on my counter ever since we made uh, cheesy bread, I think. I don't remember. But I'm gonna chop some parsley in <laughs> because I need to use this parsley. It's a little yellow just from being old. That's no problem. Still smells good and smells great. Depth of color, variegated. So you're gonna throw that in the sauce. Uh, other herbs are great in this too. So you could add like fresh dill. Basil is a common one too, but I'm not I'm not super into basil ever since the incident. All right, that looks nice. So just take this whole thing and dump it on the pasta. Probably better ways of doing this than I am, but that's how I'm gonna do it. And mix it all up. That's right, this is home style food. This is exactly how my mom made just about every pot of pasta ever. She would just dump the sauce in the pot at the end and then throw it on there and be like, it's done. But the residual heat of all this stuff should, you know, help it coat and be nice and tasty. And at this point, not a bad idea to try it. Let's see if it tastes okay. But you can see it just lightly coats the pasta. Oh, it tastes so good. That's a real nice pasta. Mm. So it's just enough sauce to coat it. Again, you're going for something light. Now again, because you're eating light and healthy, quote unquote, we're gonna finish it up with some cheese. So using tongs or a pasta server or really whatever you like, go ahead and plate up your pasta. In an ideal world, it will be roughly equal parts. Pasta and cheese. Pasta and vegetables, John. But you can see that we've made a we've made a pretty delicious meal. Not a ton of effort. It's actually way easier when you're working in a commercial kitchen because all the uh, all these vegetables would already be chopped. They'd be good to go. And so you literally would just take a pan. Pasta's probably pre-cooked too. You just throw it in a pan and be like, ah, it's done. We'll put a little effort in cleaning up the plate. And of course, would not be complete without Parmesan. This is um, Sartori Parmesan. Or a light dusting. Light dusting, just kidding. It's just putting cheese on top. And that is it. That's our dish. All right, let's give this pasta another taste with the cheese. Mmm, mmm, that's good. The vegetables still have some bite to them. So it, it feels like you're eating healthy. Even though you put it with a cream and a cheese and pasta. But all the different textures of vegetables are I think what makes this dish. And pretty much all these veggies taste good on their own, right? But this is scrumptious, very scrumptious. I highly recommend making this, especially if you got a lot of veggies you gotta use up. But yeah, quick and easy. We're done, we filmed like an hour. Not even, really. Well, that's how you do it. I don't, I don't have anything tangential to say, so see you later. <laughs>